Crypto 101. This is episode three of my 101 series on how to get started into crypto. If you've missed episodes one and two, I recommend circling back to get the details and all the information you'll need to go forward. But to recap, in episode one, I talked about centralized exchange versus decentralized exchange, as you'll probably utilize both of those going forwards for different reasons, as well as what a cold storage wallet is, and then how to transfer tokens around between these different platforms. On episode two, I talked a little more into what your trading plan is and developing your trading plan, uh, as well as what on-chain assets are, because there are certain items that are stored on the blockchain, which is a token or non-fungible token, NFT or digital collectible. Um, and then a little bit about securities and permissions, because security is very important going forward, and there are certain things you can do to protect yourself as you navigate around the blockchain. So please stay tuned, as this episode is arguably the most important. A smart contract is a digital agreement that is on the blockchain. The smart contract is accessed once you go to purchase an item from that smart contract. So as you are opening your wallet and go to make a purchase, it will open the permissions. The permissions are accessing the smart contract and providing you with the terms and conditions that need to be reviewed and signed. These permissions are very important because it allows indefinite access to your wallet. And whatever is coded into the smart contract, you're essentially allowing access to your wallet. So if you're not reviewing the smart contract or the terms and conditions, you're blindly accepting something that could happen upon execution or somewhere down the road. So it's imperative that you are doing a little bit of due diligence on these smart contracts. Now, the smart contract in the case of an NFT or non-fungible token, the smart contract is an immutable agreement uh, and it provides the characteristics of the NFT, such as if there are, you know, hats or colors or different variational characteristics for that particular item. Uh, in addition to that, the payment distribution is also stored there. So any wallets that will be paid out directly from the smart contract will be coded in and is something that you can see. Now, smart contract coding can vary based off of blockchain to blockchain. So if you're accessing Ethereum, then it's a Solidity coded contract and it's a variation of JavaScript. Um, if you have some experience in coding HTML, then chances are you can at least access the smart contract and review some of the details that are tied to it. Um, so it's something that you want to at least have a little bit of knowledge on, and I'll be glad to do some more further details on how to read the smart contract and find certain details in it that might be important to you because it is something that you need to know because once you sign and approve the permissions, that smart contract now has a revocable access, irrevocable access to your wallet. So if you have signed those permissions, that will be open to that contract. You will then have to either go to Etherscan or to revoke cash. And from either of those, you'll have to remove the permissions yourself. Uh, once you remove those permissions, um, you will still hold the NFT or digital asset in your wallet, uh, but you won't be able to list the item for sale or anything like that. Um, so while you're holding the asset, it doesn't, it actually is a benefit if you don't have that open source because years can go by and you're holding an NFT to a dead project and it's an open source. So if there was some malicious activity that potential open source could be a weak point for you to find yourself into some trouble. So that is smart contracts going forward. Be sure you're reviewing everything before you sign and make sure that you're reading those permissions, aka terms and conditions.
dApps. <laughs> dApps are apps that will connect to your wallet. So sometimes you'll be purchasing a digital collectible that will come with, say, something you could wear in the metaverse, like an outfit or something like that. That was one of the first things I ended up with was, uh, it was a, a space jumpsuit for me to go to the moon. Um, so in order for me to utilize this particular asset, um, I would go into, in this case, it was Decentraland. And upon entering Decentraland, I would connect the wallet. That application is going to open the wallet and is going to allow itself permissions to see into my wallet to see what assets are there that I could wear. So much like today where kids are playing Fortnite or Minecraft and there's these skin wearables that they can have, your non-fungible token can have a wearable for Decentraland or other metaverse uh, that allows you to wear that in their online platform. What's unique about this is that you're able to sell these items on secondary where when you purchase something in Minecraft or Fortnite, that skin or whatever it is that you're purchasing is just going to be the single use for you. There's no way at this point for you to sell it to someone else, although there are ways in other games for you to trade. Um, that is something that I see developing down the line, and I see that games will probably jump onto this at some point. But at this point, there aren't really any platforms that allow you the capabilities to sell these skins and finishes and weapons and things that you might be buying for your metaverse. So uh, the dApps are not necessarily there for the financial aspect, although they can be. Uh, for the most part, it's just viewing into your wallet and allowing access to the items that it needs for you to use that particular application. Thank you to everyone who came to my Crypto 101 series. That's the end of this three-part series. Between these three episodes, you should have enough basic knowledge to be able to move forward and give yourself enough to go off of when reading articles, engaging in conversations, and just learning the basics as you move forward in this crypto journey. No one expects you to be an expert. And I can remember asking some extremely silly questions. And it's actually a little embarrassing when you go back years later and see some of like DMs that I had sent people not realizing like what proof of stake was. I mean, it's stuff that you learn as you go. <laughs> and of course I say proof of stake and I never even told you guys what proof of stake is. So there's so much more to learn here on this channel and I will continue to educate you. I appreciate your time and thank you for the like, subscribe and follow.